So thank you for tuning in to how to teach reactive rover dog classes. I'm assuming that you're watching this DVD because you've been thinking about or wanting to learn how to teach leash reactivity to owners in a group setting. What is leash reactivity? Well, it is those dogs that bark and lunge at other dogs or people or skateboards or anything that there is their trigger. This class will help you help owners learn how to deal with leash reactivity. Remember when I was talking about the screening form and trying to decide whether uh, dogs are appropriate for group classes or not and if you're not sure what you can do is do a one-on-one -on -one private session to see if the dog is appropriate for class. So Erica thanks for meeting here today I want to just do a little assessment of Nell's reactivity because on your screening form it said that she barked and lunged from over 25 feet away when she saw another dog so I want to just see a little diagnostic we're going to start with a stuffed dog and see how she does if she can focus on you with me moving a stuffed dog by, great. And then we're going to actually practice with a non-reactive dog. My, okay. So let's give it a try. All I want you to do, this is your, just kind of walk on this straight line for me. You're just going to do, remember we talked a little bit about the find it. You're going to say find it and throw treats all the way down here. And when, okay, ready, set, here we go. Okay. Good. Okay. Give her a chance to look. I want to see what she's going to do. So give her a second to look. Let's do a little diagnostic and see if, if she'll react, but you can be able to get her to focus back and not bark and lunge. Okay. okay. All right, so let's do another pass. Good. Good. Do your findings now. Good. Keep going this way for me. All right. Not too bad, but she's clearly really aroused by a stuffed animal, right? Um, so you're able to get her focus a little bit, but let's try with a, a real dog this time and see what happens. And just start going now. Take your food away a little bit. Good. And go. Go. Good. Brenda. Yeah. Good. 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 So I want you to stand there. Brenda, go out for a second. Come on a little closer, Erica. That was good. How did that feel? Great. She seemed focused good. on the, the game. Okay. Okay, cool. So I want to see if we can do some look at that, right? If we can get kind of a, tra a training strategy be behavior. We've got some management in. You did really good with that. Thanks. Let's see, see how far we can get with her in this environment. Come on in, Brenda, and you're just going to go kind of just back and forth there for me. Can you stay stationary? Good. Yeah, let's go. Good job. Nice. Look at you. Awesome. Good. So we were able to get her focus around a dog that was kind of moving. Um, so she did a really nice job in this environment. Mm -hmm. I think that we'll be able to uh, put her into the reactive rover class. It's going to take a lot of work, Ooh, right? But no, we want to just turn and go. You don't even have to use food in that situation. We're not luring them around. We're keeping our, our arms centered here, our center of gravity. Our weight is going to take us this way. Let's go. We're just going to turn and go in the opposite direction, OK? So let me demonstrate with um, Orion. Okay. So let's play it a little bit, make it a little bit harder for Orion. Brenda's going to be kind of the distraction. She might call him or do something to get his attention. And when he pulls, I'm going to turn and go backwards. Okay, here we go. Orion. So he pulls. Uh-oh, turn. Let's go. Good job. One more time. Hi. Let's go. Boop, 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 boop. Good boy. Yeah. Now you can see, thank you, this, this, I am using my voice. Let's go, yay, in a happy tone. And he's happy about going with me over and over again. So management, right? We've got, what are our management tools that we have so far? Find it. Good, our find it does what? Gets our dog's head down. So the find it 
is a management technique. It gets our dog's head down. Great. What's another management technique that we just worked on? Good. The turn and go, they said, is another management te technique. It's kind of the get you out of dodge situation, right? So you have a couple things to play with now, right? On the fifth time, the dog leaves it, we click and treat, so then they start thinking, oh, I'll, I'll just wait till I hear leave it five times. So no nagging the dog with this. We will add the cue, trust me. So if you've already been working on leave it, I, don't, I want you to just keep your mouth closed, not say your leave it right now. We're going to start over. We're going to start from scratch. So this is Reactive Rover week three, which is um, week two with their dogs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to brief how their homework's going. I'm going to see how they did with their, their new exercises, the turn and go and the leave it. We're going to practice a little bit more of those two exercises that I just introduced last week. And then I'm going to teach them a couple new exercises, a couple training techniques later on in this class. Good. Susie. Hi. So, Hi, Sunshine. Um, yeah, I would have to agree with Bill. The find it's have been amazing. Okay. Um, and the turning goes as well. But I do have a quick question. Sure. Um, so I live on a street that's kind of like, they've got trees, I've got like two feet of sidewalk, and I get really afraid of going around. That's where it kills us, is when there's just blind corners and you don't okay. know what's coming. Right. Um, you know, so is it safe to say that I could do like, maybe a, right before I hit the edge of that corner, right before I come to that corner, I could do like a threshold there, or? Great, you know, good thinking. You know, I, I, cause I, every time I get towards that corner, I'm like, yeah, here's my suggestion for you is to move to the country. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> no, just kidding. So that's a great, that, that is if we live in a highly dense, uh, 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 a city environment where the sidewalks are pretty s small and we know that we're going to be passing people or other dogs around that blind corner, that's, that, that happens a lot. So I'm, gra I'm glad that you brought that up. So let's say that, that we were walking on the sidewalk and our blind corner was here right here and I needed to get around it, right? One of the things that you can do is where would you put your dog? Remember, you want to kind of put them on the outside closer to the road to begin with so they're not here and then you might get some reactivity because they went head on. Threshold might be good, but you can also, one of the things that you can do, and we're going to work on that today as a new exercise called targeting. And I'll show you that a little bit later. But you could probably get your dog to follow your hand as you go around that corner. Or we think of some other strategy if for you guys, what, if, you, if that's happening for you a lot, you can have your dog kind of sit, tell him to stay, step in front a little bit so you can see what's around the corner. So it's good. So what, what I want to do is show you two new exercises, two new training exercises. Um, that you can use with your dog. And, and when Susie was asking about those close qu quarters or those close corners, this is an exercise that you can use. The other thing is if you have a little bit, a dog that's a little bit shy or fearful, you can use this exercise as well. It's called targeting. Okay? It's also good for loose leash walking. Is that if I'm walking here, I just hold my hand down, the dog touches my hand, it keeps them here versus out there. So it has many useful things. It's a good kind of obedience behavior that, that any dog should have.